first of some series of uh, workshops that we're planning to do on our flash loans. Um, this first workshop would be about, well, how the contracts work, um, how, to, how to interact with them uh, and so on. Um, and then by the end of the workshop, we would do um, a flash loan demo live. Let's see if it goes as intended, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, hopefully the RV is still there. Um, cool. So let me share my screen. That sounds exciting. It, it is. You're supposed to be excited. Yeah. <laughs> um, cool. Um, so let me know if you see my screen, correct? If you can read if um, maybe two small letters, I don't know. Is it fine this, this size of the fonts? Yeah, can you zoom in a little bit more maybe? Like this? Yeah, yeah, thanks. Go, cool. let it be a bit more. Um, awesome, so let's start by mentioning um, what a flash loan is. So basically a flash loan is uh, it's it's basically when when you do when you take funds uh, from from a vault, let's say, and you do multiple operations, multiple basically calls and loss and messages, and and um, in the same transaction, uh, so that you can either close or an arbitrage, uh, get an arbitrage opportunity, or maybe liquidate some. Uh, some collateral that you have in some platform and move it over to another platform or, or something like that. So basically allows you to, to take funds uh, without any collateral to a certain operation and then return the funds by the end of the transaction. So um, you may ask what happens if you cannot return the funds? Well, the, the transaction just gets canceled and reverted and, and it says as it didn't happen. So there is no issue on that. Um, if you are, um, let me show first actually uh, the website because uh, we recently open sourced, uh, let me see here. So we open sourced recently our uh, bots and together with that, some documentation. So if you go to our Miguel docs, you can see well you can see everything about the smart contracts uh, some the, the deployments that we have on different chains at the moment then information about liquidity hub different messages for our contracts uh, the responses and everything uh, today yeah we'll be focusing mostly on the vault network since that's the one where we take the flash loans on um, and also uh, here you can find the documentation for calling the flash loans, some example, and then uh, information about the arbitrage bots. This is what we open sourced recently. Uh, this will be another workshop. Uh, today, as I mentioned, it's going to be about the, the smart contracts. Um, but if you follow along the documentation, you will see that it's it's yeah it's very straightforward like if you follow all the steps you will you will get it so it's um yeah i i was today reading all this stuff and and yeah it's it's very intuitive at least if, if you have some uh if you're a developer it should be intuitive enough um also we have uh, yeah these are different docs uh, mean scan that we will use later to see the transaction. And if you look at our, our front end, uh, together with the, with the bots, well, I think it was like two weeks ago, we released this flash loan uh, tab. So the thing about flash loans is that they are usually tailored to developers, basically, or, or bots, but well, the bots are made by developers. Um, so we created this page to, to make it easier for people to interact with our flash loans, even if you're not a developer. Uh, you need to, of course, know a bit of how to format the message, but basically this is the message that you will be passing to the, to the vault router. 
Um, so a bit about our architecture. Let me show, I think, uh, GitHub. If we go here to make a look core, um, let me show here. So this is this is the this is the liquidity hub that we have. So we have the pool network that has a pool factory that owns and creates different pools. So these pools can be, for instance, um, say uh, you know USDC or Adam Luna or whatever it is, some pair of tokens. Then you have uh, the vault network, which has uh, the vault factory and different vaults. So. The vaults are essentially more or less like a pool, but only holds a single asset. So this, the pools hold two assets, uh, the vault only holds one. And the use case of the vaults are exactly the, the flashings that we're going to be talking about today. So, and all these, uh, well, the fees that are happening in, in all, all these elements are collected by the fee collector. So, um, so this is a bit of context on our architecture. So let's, uh, there is a piece of, yeah, there is a piece that is missing here and here as well. There is a pool router and there is also a pool factor, uh, um, a vault router. So the vaults, as I mentioned, they provide the flashing functionality. And if you want to interact, if you wanted to interact with the if you wanted to take a flash loan, basically you needed to you need to know how to talk to each vault. But what we did is to make it easier for everybody is we created this vault router. Um, what the vault router does basically you just tell the the router okay give me X token or give me X asset, and then the router will just query the factory, look for which is the right vault. To, to take the flash loan and, and route the messages through through that road, take the funds from there and so on. So uh, it's uh, very convenient actually to use it that way, and 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 that's what you should be using if, if you interact with our flash loans, basically the the vault router. Um, that being said, let's go back to the code. Any questions until here? Or is it cool? Someone's typing. Um, cool. So, so the pool would be a single asset, like in all the. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Can I make a question, uh, or I have to write it? Ah, yeah, yeah. Feel free to to just to just mention. I didn't know you could just speak. Yeah. If you have a question, just speak. Okay. Uh, why did you create some different vaults for each asset and uh, you don't use a, a single one and aggregate all assets in the same vault? Um, yeah, that's a good question. Well, uh, it makes it, one of the things makes it easier to calculate, easier to calculate, uh, because when you deposit um, a token into the vault, uh, you're giving an LP token, uh, but basically the LP token is representing the shares of of your input in the given vault. Uh, and the same happens for the pool. So if you have multiple tokens, that becomes a bit more messy. Uh, yeah, but, but you give the share uh, and don't save because if a user deep, uh, deposit some vault, uh, some funds in the vault, uh, you mm -hmm. give them a share uh, in LP token as I understand, and mm -hmm. uh, you don't save in the state of the smart contract uh, for each user the amount, right? Yeah, that's correct. Okay. That's correct. Okay. Um, and also, it, it's also, it also has to do with, you know, usually in DeFi, uh, you have, like traditionally pools are called something that has two or more assets and vaults, things that have only one asset. And there are use cases for that because there are people that you know, you might hold certain asset and you don't necessarily want to want to put it into a pool because of impermanent loss or, or something like that. So you just you just want to put your fund somewhere, get some yield. Uh, so that's that's another reason. Um, so um, 
if you clone our Migaloo um, core repository, you will see basically what I'm showing you here. Um, so you have here on the Vault network, under contracts, liquidity hub, you find our Vault network. Here you get the code, the, the code for the Vault and for the Vault router. So let's start uh, looking at the Vault router. Um, so you have, uh, well, I will not go through each part of the, of, uh, each message of the, of the, of the contract, rather focus on the, on the flash loan functionality. Um, so if we look at the, at the, the messages that you can send to the vault router are basically, uh, flash loan, next loan, complete loan. Oh, well, update config, but this is basically to update the configuration of, of the vault router. Um, so these are the three that you need to focus on, basically. Actually, the one that you need to focus on is only this one, because these other two are, are quality. Oops. All right. Kerber, you yeah. good? Yeah, I don't know. This, um, yeah, Discord crashed or something. <laughs> oh, okay. Happens. Happens to Discord. Yeah, I don't know. I was talking and I saw that Discord disappeared. So, yeah, I'm showing here again. So, um, yeah, I was, I was. All right, it happened again. Yeah. This is not, not fun. Mm, let's see. Let's try once again. Let me. Yeah. Let's see. So uh, these other two messages you don't need to focus on because this is going to be called internally for you. So only the basically message. Uh, so you need a list of assets, a vector of assets, and a vector of Cosmos messages. So this can basically be a bank message, can be a WhatsApp message or, or whatever you want to do, basically. Um, so if we go to what happens when you receive the, the flash, loan, um, flash loan message on the router. So, um, so basically, uh, we, yeah, the reason why we were, we ha we're having here a vector of assets is because initially we we coded this in a way that you could query multiple assets at once, uh, like do basically nested flash loans, but we have disabled that functionality for now. So you can only put asset at the moment. Uh, so you can only, only request one asset. So you request that thing. Um, you come here. So as I mentioned, it, the vault router queries the vault factory. Because the vault factory is acts as a directory of all the vaults that, that have been created, basically. So it queries it queries the factories, and this will give you the address of the vault and the type of asset that that vault holds. Uh, with that, uh, so it comes here and it starts uh, pushing these messages, basically. So it was the messages execute to the vault that. Um, that well that that you get let's say if you wanted to to get uh usdc from the usdc vault so you get that here and messages you send as a binary message you send uh to request the flash loan basically from the vault uh you say you specify here the amount which is which is the amount that you specified here when you pass the asset um, and then in the in the message that you're passing to the to the vault, 
you're saying, okay, exit, do, do this execute message next long. This next long is is in the vault in the vault router basically. So uh, you're passing here some information like uh, how much is it to loan and what is the source of the vault and and stuff like that. So once that happens, uh, basically you're going to the vault, getting the funds from there, coming back here to the to the next long um, method or well message. And what is happening here? What what is happening here? Well, it first makes sure that the vault that it was a, a vault created by Whitewell that called this message, and then um, exactly, and then um, and then basically looks through through all the messages and and executes them basically. So um, you can see here that. Um, yeah, is is querying um, the flash long on um, let me see next long next long yeah. So it's it's then um, pushing all these messages to the next long um, message on the router until eventually it runs out of them and it will just um, it will just call complete long. I mean complete long. Uh, what it does is that it makes sure that you're basically paying off uh, the loan plus, plus the, um, the fees. So, um, well, this is happening in the vault. This doesn't happen here in the, in the vault router. So, um, so, yeah, in here what happens is that uh, you check that is the router executing this message? So it's it's a proper callback, basically. Uh, you pay back the loans together with the profit here. Um, here you're querying how much is it that you need to pay uh, in the vault for the current vault. Um, yeah, here you need to uh, get the amount that the, that the router has after performing the flash loan. And everything else will be sent back to the to the person or, or the contract that initiated the flash loan uh, here, basically. So if it's a native token, you're using the bank module to do that. Uh, well, if it's a token, a CW20 token, then do a, a transfer. Um, yeah, that's that's basically the vault router. It acts more or less like a wrapper uh, vaults. Um, everything else is happening on the vault. So let's look at the vault uh, for a second. So in the vault, it's uh, this is the vault is the one that is holding the funds basically. Uh, so if you want to take again, like let's say it, later in the example, we're going to be borrowing uh, Juno X on, on basically on the Juno testnet. So I will I will speak in those terms already, so you get familiar with how things are going to be working. So imagine this is the this is the Juno X vault. Uh, it contains Juno X. Uh, well, here was the instantiate message. We're initializing stuff here. Then on the execute, uh, we have well we have deposit to deposit funds, uh, collect protocol fees, flash loan, different things, but. We're going to be focusing on the flash loan. Deposit is basically if you want to if you want to deposit your funds there for a yield, right? Um, the ones that we are using uh, now is basically flash loan and callback. So, flash loan is this is the message that the router is is calling. So, if you go and look at this, so you have an amount and you have a binary message that is going to be executed. Um, so here we make some validations, uh, increase the loan counter. This is just to, to make sure that you're paying basically your debt once you're, you call the, the, the callback that when, when, you're, when you're done with the, with the flash loan. Um, yeah, so here you get the, the old balance to, to check after you made the trade. Um, so say if it's a native token, this is if it's a, if it's a CW20 token, you will be basically transferring the funds to the, to the sender 
of, of this message. In this case, it would be the vault router, right? But it could be another contract if, if you call this vault directly, basically. Um, if it's then um, a native token, uh, then you just uh, push some coins here into the contract and you pass the message. So this is basically going back to the info sender, which which was the vault router. So you're sending you're sending now the, the funds to the vault router with the message that that you told it to execute, basically. Um, and then after this happens, you call um, you call this callback after trade message. So you're basically sending the funds from the vault to the to the router. All these messages are being executed, and once that's done, uh, this callback after trade is called to make sure that well that you paid the loan back. Uh, so you see that in this message, you're passing the old balance. So based all balance, basically the original balance that you query here before before you send the tokens out. Um, and then um, and then how much was it that you borrowed. Um, so let's look at the after the after trade callback now. So as I mentioned, once all the messages were executed, the callback is called. Um, and this is called basically by the same contract, so by the vault, just to make sure that it's, uh, yeah, it's a legit call and it's, it's something that is called internally. You can, you can call this yourself. Uh, so if you try to do it, you will get an error that is it's not a, it's not the, the vault calling this. Um, then checks that the message is this after trade, and if so, then it queries the new balance of the pool of the not of the pool of the vault, uh, because in theory when this is called, you already pay back your your loan basically. You already send the funds back to the vault. So if you come here. If it's a native token, well, you query the native token or you query the, the CW20 token, and then you get the how much is the protocol fee. So the protocol fee is calculated on the on the loan amount. Same with the flash loan fee and the and the newly introduced burn fee. So um, the required amount by the vault when everything is is done is basically the old balance which. Which, if you remember uh, correctly, is uh, basically the is the original balance uh, of the pool of the vault, uh, adding the protocol fees and well all the all the fees basically the protocol flash loan and, and burn fee. So, what in here you're basically verifying that you're actually returning like this new balance is is the the current balance of the vault. So if the current balance of the vault is lower than the amount that the vault requires, meaning if you didn't pay the flash loan correctly, right? So if you didn't pay the loan plus the fees, then it gets you an error. So if if you're testing things out and you're doing a flash loan, but you're not sure if it's going to work or not, I mean, you can always try because if it doesn't work, you will get an error like this, negative profit, this is the old balance, this is the current balance, and this was the required amount. So you will know exactly what were the balances and what was it that was required from you. Um, so there is there is no no harm because if if you enter in this error, well the, the whole transaction is reverted and it is as it didn't happen. Um, so if you pass this validation, it means that you pay back what you needed to pay, right? Um, so, um, so we calculate the profit that you made, which is basically, um, the current balance of the vault minus the old balance and the fees. So that's, that's the profit that you would have made. Um, and yeah, if it's, if it's, a if it's a burn, if, if there is some burn fee, you burn, you burn it. Um, and that's it. Uh, this was calculated for for showing it in the logs, but the 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 vault router already sent it back to you basically um, before. So um, 
Yeah, this is this is uh, this is more or less. Oh, yeah, and we deduct the the long counter. This is important. Uh, so um, so yeah, uh, this is um, this is more or less in a nutshell how the flash zone works. Uh, so any questions until until here? Now we're gonna go into the fun part. I mean the the live demo. So we have one question in the chat. Um, Late was actually asking, uh, currently on front end, I can see only one vault of Juno. Does that mean only flash loans uh, allowed is of Juno right now? Um, yeah, that's, that's correct. Yeah, um, depends on the chain though, right? Because we have different chains and yeah. uh, depending on the chain, we have different assets. And then the yeah, fun, and, yeah. Well, and, and to complement on that, sure, you you can only so far only in quotation marks stake, uh, you know, you know, as as a flash loan. But theoretically, if if you wanted to, you could just get you know out of the vault, swap it for anything else that you need. Say that you need atom, so you take Juno, swap it to atom, do whatever you need with the atom, then take the atom back swap it to Juno and pay the vault. So it doesn't need to be that you need to do everything with just Juno or or Luna um, or, or another asset. So it, it's just think about it as you have a pool of funds that you can use at your disposal uh, without any collateral. So if you need any other asset, you can just borrow it and swap it. But of course, when you swap these things, you probably will be um yeah you have some extra transactions that you need to consider and uh, and maybe some 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 of the funds will go away in some of these transactions and then when you try to pay it back you will not have enough so so yeah yeah nice uh pools are in no way related to flash loans um you kind of alluded to that they're a little bit related but not really right so from from a liquidity perspective they're independent right yeah so so as i showed that in the diagram before uh, the the pools are part of the pool network and they are not really connected uh you can you can i mean you can use them in combination so you could take a flash loan from the from the vault and then do some art in the pools and then pay back to the vault. And this is exactly what we're going to do uh, next. So it's not like they are connected per se, but, uh, but they are somewhat connected because, um, because yeah, you, you could, you could use them in tandem basically. Yeah. Okay, cool. Use case here right now is closing arbitrage on Juno swap currently. Is there anything else I'm missing? Um, so, so yeah, the, for flash loans, the, the, um, the most, um, let's say the kind of the default or the most straightforward or obvious, uh, play is basically to close arbitrage. So, and this is exactly what we're going to be running into now. Uh, I can give you other examples, but basically this is, this is the most used uh use case uh so far so basically the way it works is that you have two pools say pool one and pool two um and three that they both hold the same assets so in this case we'll be speaking about a token well it's if you know x which is the, the native token of the uh juno testnet and also another token called juno x1 which is which is a CW20 token, uh, also on the on the Juno testnet. So these two pools are both pools of Juno X and Juno X1, but they imagine that it, it happens because this is a decentralized pool. It always happens that some pool will have some price disparity in comparison to the other one. So if a whale comes and dumps a bunch of tokens in this pool, then the ratio uh, or the exchange rate in this pool will be different than this one. 
so people are of course encouraged to take take um, take money and um, basically swap like i said here swap one token for the other here then get it and swap it back in the other pool and then you will get a profit just just because the prices were too different here and this happens not only in Nexus, this happens also in, in centralized exchanges. It's just that you have so many bots working uh, in all the uh, everywhere that that you see more or less the price on let's say Kraken and Coinbase are virtually the same. Or maybe there is a, a price difference, but then when you refresh the page, then the, the the price disappear already because this thing is happening constantly. So. Um, the way it works is that you request a flash loan to the Vault Raptor. So the vault router checks uh, in all the vaults that we have. So uh, what is the right vault to talk to? So in this case, you requested uh, uh, the token A or, or Juno X in this case. So you take the funds from here. So you swap token A for B. And in this case, B is uh, Juno X1. So you swap Juno X for Juno X1 in the pool num number one. Then you get this Juno you know x1 that you took from this uh, pool and swap it back to you know x in the second pool that has a different price and here you will get basically you pay the loan back to the to the vault and plus the fees and then you keep the difference and you win <laughs> so uh that's that's the the arbitrage use case and and you see that of course you could do this thing yourself with your own funds but what if you don't have funds or moreover what if you maybe you have funds but you don't have them in that particular chain so this is this is where uh white whales infrastructure comes into play because then you don't need to be having uh funds deposited in, in all these different chains you can just go and use our flash loan borrow borrow against our vault do the swaps that you need to do, pay back the loan, and you profit the difference. Um, so that's one thing. Uh, another use case you could have is that imagine you have um, you borrow money from like you, you. Some of you mentioned Aave before. So on Aave, you can you can uh, borrow money, right? You deposit say Ethereum or ETH as as collateral, and then you get uh, Dai or or whatever. You get you get some some other token uh, back. But think that the token, uh, they give you this loan at a, I don't know, a 10% rate. Uh, but then there is the, there comes another platform, uh, say Compound or whatever else, that offers the same loan, basically. It has the same, the same pairs that you need, but instead of 10%, it gives you 5% rate. So of course, you would like to do the, the thing in the other, in the other platform that gives you five percent instead of ten, but but the issue is that now the the money that you took out of Aave initially, you maybe you used it or you have it locked in some pool or whatever. You don't have the you don't have those funds available. So what you can do is that you take a, you take a flash loan, you basically pay pay the pay the you close basically the position in Aave and reopen it in in uh, in the in the other platform compound i think i said so you open it in the other one um you basically need to pay just uh, these fees back you don't even need your own money because you will be putting the collateral here you take let's say you put if, if you borrow die against ETH, let's say you borrow die from the pool uh, you pay the die back you get the ETH. you put the ETH back in the other pool or uh, not pool or on the other platform compound let's say and then you take the die back you pay the vault and uh, plus the fees and then you get a better interest rate in the in the other platform so that's another use case um and um, well there, there are more use cases for sure it's it's up to your imagination yeah. whatever you need capital to do something uh there is always a use case for flashing so it's so, does that um, answer your question? Is it clear? Uh, I have some question here, if possible. Yep. So, 
Um, when I forward the message to Voice Router, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, in your schema, you are going to mm, perform some swap in uh, pool one and two. I think this is your pool, right? That I saw. Mm -hmm. But if uh, I need the discount, oh, uh, it's okay. Con continue, continue. I will, I will if I need the discount uh, to be forward with a message to uh, my smart contract, because uh, maybe is uh, my uh, own uh, router smart contract for arbitrage, I can do mm -hmm. this without yeah, uh, using yeah. your pool. Yeah, okay. yeah, you can do it. Oh. And moreover, okay. uh, I, I put here, I put here pool one and pool two. This and is an this example, in, I think. Yeah, in this particular example, we will do it with some pools that I created this morning on 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 the on the Juno testnet, uh, and they are basically white whale pools. But but this doesn't need to be white whale pools. It can be one white whale pool and one uh, astroport pool, or and it doesn't need to be two pools. It can be five pools, you know. So it. It doesn't need to yeah. be two swaps. Yeah. Yeah. What uh, what I was asking for is if the message that uh, the world router will be forward uh, could be another smart contract outside the white whale ecosystem, and uh, you already answered me to this question. Uh, so okay. Um, so world router is uh, also useful because uh, I have just one contract. Uh, to be interact and the vault router is able to withdraw uh, funds from the correct vault depending on mm -hmm. the asset that I'm asking for. Uh, yeah. So I don't have to uh, talk directly with the vault A or vault B or mm -hmm. vault C because I just talk uh, with the router, right? Yeah, correct. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, this, this contract is already developed in some chain in mainnet. Yeah, uh, because it is, I see it is live. It is live. For example, on, on, Juno, on Terra. On Juno and Terra, yeah. Okay. So if you go, if you go and see our deployments, um, let me change the window again. Uh, Main scan, I think it was this one, or maybe not. No, it was not that one. Let me see. This one. So if you go, where was it? Yeah, uh, here. If you go deployments, uh, you have Juno, so you can see here um, all the basically all our Vault. contracts or the pools. Um, oh, the vaults are not here. Yeah, okay. This this needs to be added here. But there there are vaults. There there is a vault here, so I need to add that. Uh, Terra is the same. Yeah, we're also missing the vaults. Uh, in on Chihuahua, I think we don't have vaults yet. I'm not 100% sure. Um, you can you can verify by by taking the vault factory and query. Yeah, like, in query. Yeah. You okay. go here. You go here. Vault factory. Uh, you go here. Vaults. Just just query here. To remove this pagination stuff. Just query vaults, and it will give you it will give you something like this. Okay. Um, so. But, but yeah, um, uh, also to to answer your question, so you can of course um, develop your own contract if if you have it, if you think it's better or whatever, you have it optimized, you can have it. But then you need to interact with our vault, like you need to interact directly with the vault. So you you like to get funds from the vault you need a you need a contract basically you cannot do it manually from a, from a from a wallet because of how the messages are built yeah 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 um, and also so i need to send it back yeah so uh, directly so to the you, vault you need, not to the router right exactly and um, um, okay. you need you need some sort of some sort of contract in this case we provided the vault router that basically does does all that for you so the vault router is like like the wrapper that you need in order to call flash loans. So it it doesn't really matter. I mean, if you go through the code, it, it, it's not doing any extra random stuff. It, it's just taking taking the, the the input, the request of give me X amount of tokens, and here are the messages for you to execute. That's it, and, and that's all it does. So it, it's, it's very so light. One, okay, so once I'm done with my own um, arbitrage for <laughs> Arbitrary transaction. I needed to send the, the funds that uh, I take as a loan plus the fee. I think because there yeah. will be a fee, of course, uh, mm -hmm. to the vault, not to the router, right? So 
Uh, well, all that is done by the router. That, that's, that's what I'm saying. Like, like to the, we will see now. Basically, what you do, <coughs> um, let, let's show it right away. So this will answer your question as well. Um, I will share it, wait. This is a bit buggy. What happened here? <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's not clearing the whole terminal. But anyways, um, you can can you read the, the terminal properly here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so let's start. Um, I have some some setup here prepared. Uh, let me let me look it up. Uh, scripts deployment output. So I deployed. I deploy some pools, as I mentioned. So the tokens are you know X and you know X1. So this is the pool address for one pool. The other pool is this one. And then the vault is is this one. Um, so you can see here is the vault factory and this is the vault router. This is what we will be interacting with. So I think I have this already. Let me check. Pool one, pool two, vault. And called the uh, router. Yeah. So I have these variables already set up here together with some other stuff. So uh, let's, uh, let's, see. let's first, uh, well, check the balances of, of, uh, of the wallet that we will be calling the flash along with. Um, let me see. I should have it here already. Yeah. So this is the wallet that we will be using. Um, so at the moment it has, uh, let me see, so like 183 Juno X. So let's remember the number 183. This is the wallet that <laughs> is signing the transaction or the vault? Yeah, this is the router that I will be, sorry, this is the, the, the wallet that will, I will be using to call the flash log. Okay. So uh, this, this is the one that I use to deploy the contracts and stuff. I mean, it's just a way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So uh, currently it has 183 Juno X in, in, the, in the world. So um, secondly, uh, let's, let's query the pools and see, and see how, how is the, um, let, let's run a simulation on the pool basically. So if we go to our docs, um we have here the simulation oh well i actually think i have these messages somewhere here already so yeah this is what we will be sending uh no all right let me let me just do it again so so the simulation it looks something like this so imagine i want to swap uh uh, 100, uh, one, uh, 10 Junos, yeah, 10 Juno X. Okay. So this is what I will be simulating. Uh, contract tape one, and then give me, um, a, uh, um, query, um, plus some conflict tape. Okay, so the pool one, this is this is a simulation. So what it does, they, this yes, query, yes. what it does, I know, you know. you're saying, give me if I if I give you this amount of Juno X, how much are you going to return of the other token? So in this case, it says that the this pool will give me uh, 377 um, Juno X one. So let's copy this stuff. Let's create a file here. So pool one will give me this, and pool two, let's see how much it will give me. So pool two. So pool two will give you um, something like 195. So you see that they are out of balance. So in that case, yeah. uh, we can benefit from, from, the, from doing an arbitrage, yes. So uh, we have that. So the next step is basically to what we want to do is to borrow to borrow from the vault, right? Borrow 10, 10, 10 Juno X. 
um, swap it, swap it in this first pool because we will get 377 Juno X1. Then go to go to the second pool, and we can even do if we do a different query here, and we say. Uh, how much would it be if I provide this amount of of the second token, right? Uh, yes. It's not there. It's uh, contract address. Uh, let me find the address for this. Um, somewhere here. Yeah, this helps. So if I query this, so this will give me um say this will give me uh, seven now wait this is not correct you have to reverse i think the roots i think i think i have the the wrong pool here uh this is pool two maybe i close the arbitrage because um no but this this will give me this this is out of balance we will definitely will definitely work here um, yeah my, you have a two reverse the route i think yeah so well let's 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 continue with that so we simulated the stuff and then um so now what we need to build is basically the this stuff so Flashlong we have already, um, but then this is this is what we're gonna send to the Vault Router. Uh, so assets, what's, uh, what assets do we want to send? So uh, the asset we want to send is um, is um, how do you call it? Uh, you know X, right? I, I have this stuff ready here. Actually, I will just show it. Um, so this is this is the asset, right? So it's a native token. You know X and and ten of it, yeah. So for the messages, so the messages we want to send two messages, right? We want to send uh, the first message is is swapping is swapping from if you remember him correctly, we want to swap the Juno X for Juno X one in in this pool in the first pool. So it's a native swap, uh, native to to CW twenty. Then with the CW20 that we get here, uh, the 377 Juno X1, we want to swap that back to Juno X in the second pool. So this is uh, a different type of swap, is is the CW20 for for native. So in that case, the first message is this one. So we have a swap. Uh, and again, this is all in the documentation, how you do the swap. So swap the offer asset uh, the amount, well, the amount is uh, 10, right? Micro, micro junior, X, if you talk, yes. And then the second asset will basically be um, a send. So you need to basically send this to the to the CW20. Because it's a transfer to, oh yeah, it's a Correctly. to 20. Correctly. So, so this is, this is the, this is the, this is to be sent to this, to the, uh, yeah, you know, X1, which is a CW20 uh, address. So it's a cent, so the amount, it's going to be this 377 something. Uh, the contract, this contract is is the pool that we, where we want to send it, so uh, it's going to be the pool number two. Uh, and then, what is this message? So we can decode it here. Um, a sixty-four. Um, no. We can paste this. So it's basically a yeah. swap, it's just a, a regular swap. Um, so this is to be encoded in binary, and then when we go and look at the the full message, actually. So the full message is okay. This is the asset. So the first message is going to be a wasm execute type of message. The contract, this is the pool, the first the, the first pool. So if we echo here, pool one. So you see, this is the first pool. This message is basically the binary representation, the binary, the base sixty four representation of uh, of this of this message. So we can we can decode it as well. 
Mm -hmm. Yes. So there is two. So it's this swap, right? Um, you you pass the funds. So these these funds are basically are the ones that are coming from the vault. So the ones that you're requesting here. So this is basically if it's a native token, this is the place where you're gonna put them, uh, and that's about it. It's in the first message because all these messages are basically chain one after another. So uh, the first message to be executed is the first in the array, then the second one, then the third, and so on. Uh, so the first message was that. The second message was was this this sent one to the to the token, right? To the token address, uh, the CW20. Uh, and again, this needs to be encoded in binary. This whole thing. So this by is uh, base64 here and base64 here again. So if we go yeah, here yeah. and decode this message, see, there is always some equal sign there that is not being copied if you just double click it. <laughs> so if we copy this here, we see it's, it's this amount basically. It's this message that I showed. So that's pretty much the thing that you need to send to the. Um, uh, oh, yeah, that's correct. That's pretty much what you need to be sending to the to the vault router. So uh, now let's try that out. So the vault router, um, let's do here. Um, yeah, and for you who are wondering, what is this uh, dollar sign binary? Is basically Unity. This is just some variables that I set up before for make it convenient. Um, let's see, I have it, some execute here, somewhere, not, oh yeah, I have one here, so binary execute, so the address is going to be the, the vault router, the message, uh, I need to pass the message first, okay, let's do this, so the message is going to be this whole thing, right, flash yes. down, so, Let's set up the message equal to this. Just copy there. Doesn't look pretty, but that's how it is. Um, so then let's go back and try to execute. And this terminal became weird when I zoom when I zoomed in. So uh, vault router uh, sending the message. This TX flag is basically all the stuff for the like gas, gas fees, gas auto, yeah. give the output as JSON, all that. And then from the wallet is going to be deployer. Um, now the, the wallet is going to be what? Um, yeah, basically the one that I, I query at the beginning. Let me see the one with the with with the initial balance. This one. Yeah. So that's it. So when we execute this, what would happen is that the the, the this message over here is going to be sent to the to the vault router. Take this these funds from the vault, execute these messages, and pay back the loan. So that's it. Oh, we got an error. So why, why was that? So I'm missing something. Um, RPC, some negative, but yeah, I think, I think I might have spoiled the, the um, I think I spoiled the, the arbitrage because, because with that amount, at least, uh, because I was doing this before and I, and I closed it up, I think. Let me let me then request less. Um one two no maybe. One Juno X. Yeah, I will need to re recall this stuff. Uh yeah, just a second. Let's see. Uh, let me see. Ah, uh, well, I, so stupid, I had it here already. Right. Let me remove it from here. So yeah, let's just get one Juno instead.
Uh, oh no, let me, let me just remove the lines. Yeah, this is, even though I, I tried this before, it, it's always, it's always something with light golden. Uh, anyways, so this is the new encoded message. Over here. Um, so this is one Juno X now. And then for this, oh yeah, we need to run the simulation again for the second pool. So let's try that again. Two. Uh, there, and then uh, query. Oh uh, yeah, the query was query. But now we're going to have um, Oh, yeah, this is very different. Now it's, it's going to be a uh, demo. And then X. ID token. And the amount is going to be 1. Okay. And then let's do the binary query. I have it somewhere here. So this will give us this amount of of uh, the second token. So let's put this back into the this message. Uh, where's the second message? Uh, I put it down here. Here, and let me encode this stuff. May sixty four. Which is this, and hopefully I will work. <laughs> yeah. There, and then, um, yeah, then, well, we have a uh, binary uh, tracks transaction where some. Execute the contract is the vault router the message. <clears throat> Section flag and then from from this wallet, where is it? This wallet. All right, let's see if this is enough now. Damn, I got it the same. Yeah, negative profits. So you see, you cannot mess it up <laughs> because if 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 you cannot repay the the right balance, then you get uh, you get these negative profits. Um, okay, okay. What I will what but I what I will enough. do is, this is enough. As... Yeah, what I will do though is I will show you the um, the transaction that I did earlier today. Uh, the one that is balanced the stuff <laughs> because uh, I had it ready and I thought, well, it should still not bring it back to peg, but apparently it, it's skewed the thing very badly and it's not letting me to, to orbit basically. But um, basically this was, uh, let me show you. So yeah. So this was a transaction that I did earlier today. Well, you see four hours ago. Uh, do you see the screen already? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. So in, in this example, uh, I took, yeah, I took 10, you know, X as well. I basically did the same, the same thing as I'm doing now. Uh, the difference is, is that it worked. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, you can see that I profited 71, you know, X from that trade. Um, <clears throat> so I took 10 out of the vault. Uh, I pay back this, this 10 of, of 4, and let me screen this, increases the font. This is what was paid back with the fees and so on. And then I profited this 7163. Um, if we explore the JSON a bit better, I mean, this is, this is not super clear to read. 
Let's put knock on down. Else. The input is down. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but I will, I will just process it here and, and show it here better. Um, yeah. Let me see. Somewhere here, like this. So, um, uh, let's see. Coin receive, no. Coin spend, no. Execute, so, no. Last one. Um, this is the last the key was. Yeah. yeah, this one. So, <coughs> sorry. So yeah, uh, this was the the default router. So we call the flash loan on that. We we get this amount from the from the vault, and we call flash loan on that. Uh, this is the this this flash loan is being sent to the router again, which calls this next loan that I told you about. Uh, calls the CW7. Uh, this this is one of the pools. Yeah, exactly. It does the swap in the first pool, so it 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 swaps to to the CW20. Uh, gets well, burn fee was set set to zero in that pool. Uh, offer amount was this amount of you know X. These are the protocol fees, uh, and this was the amount that was returned. So 453. You know, X one. The receiver is the router, right? Uh, yeah, the receiver is the, is the router. Yeah. So then this is uh, swapped back. Uh, so here is being sent to the to the second. Basically, these funds over there, these funds, are being sent back to the second pool. Uh, this is the second pool. Ah, no, this this is a router still. Sorry. So here are being sent yeah, to the second pool and then you trigger the swap again and you're asking you know x instead uh, and this time you get protocol fees so you get you you get 81 you know actually 81 you know x in return so you took 10 out of the vault you did these swaps you got 81 and then what happens is that you return basically the time that you took plus the fees, right? So um, so you see there was a burn fee, flash loan fee, uh, protocol fees, and uh, and well, at, at the end, well, you call this complete loan. The complete loan takes takes this eighty one sixty seven that this this landed in the in the router basically. Uh, so. From here, you subtract the the initial ten that you that you took plus all these protocol fees, flash loan fees, and so on, and you keep the difference, and and that's where where this seventy one something came from. Uh, so um, so it was a very massive trade. Of course, I I set the pools very off balance. I, I, one one of them was one to one, having one to one the amount of tokens, and the other one was like one to fifty or something like that. So, so it was very very disbalanced. Um, and yeah, that's that's um, that's basically uh, how it works. So you okay, profited, in this case, <clears throat> so you profited a bunch of bunch of Juno X out of out of markets uh, disparities basically price disparities so uh, in this case you didn't need to do you didn't need any any funds nothing i mean the only funds that you needed to was the ones that you used to pay for the for the gas for the transaction basically other than that um it was all all profit and all taken from the flash loan and, and, and yeah Okay, so in this case, uh, you uh, you was directly swap message, right? So the second swap is sending back uh, the pounds to the router, and uh, that's all. But if I needed to use my own router, I needed to mm -hmm. send uh, the pounds uh, take as loan in my router with the, of course the message that is being forwarded. Once my router is done, I have to send uh, the pounds back uh, to the router, right? That is the next yeah. step is different. I mean that you. You, 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 you can you can make your own router <laughs> or or another contract. Doesn't need to be a, a router per se, but um, Yeah, yeah, but uh, it's just an example. Yeah, so yeah. Um, what you need to do is basically if you if you implement your own router or your own contract, you basically need to um, 
you need to go to uh, the vault, take take the vault, take the funds from the vault directly, do everything you needed to do, and um, and then pay it back. Yeah, yeah. So if okay, in this case, but, when but, uh, but, the, the, but the last message, the last message that you need to send in your in your flash flash loan chain is basically yeah. sending sending the funds back to the vault. That's that's what you need to do okay. if you do it manually. Yeah. Okay, so uh, can you please go back to the code and uh, um, uh, explain the second, uh, the check, the check, uh, the message check of the phones if they are coming back is uh, on the vault on the router? Yeah. The message show you. It's like the minimum receive from, from standard router, right? At the end of the message, you forward to yourself another message. Uh, to the contract that check if the minimum receive is satisfied or not, or it's more or less the yeah. same. Yeah. So that but that part is... that that part is on the on the on the vault. That that's in this okay. callback message, and this happens in this after trade. So here it's is where it checks what is the required amount, and checks yes. with adds all the protocol fees and all this stuff. Um, um, and if so, then if, if it doesn't meet that criteria, then the flash loan uh, breaks. It, it gets cancelled. So I can talk directly. <laughs> okay, yeah. so I can talk directly to the vault asking for the phones, and when I'm done, I'm sending uh, the phones back to the vault, right? Directly yeah. without yeah. using the router if yeah. I don't want to use the router. Yeah, I mean, you can, you can see, like, if, if you want an example of basically how to do it, you can just look at the vault router because that's exactly what it's doing. So it, it's taking, it's taking the, the the flash loan here. So basically, like you can you can filter the noise from here if, if you wanted to. Like uh, you can um, you can just talk. here yeah. is is checking for the vault, right? So but if you know the vault that you're talking to directly, you don't need to do that. Uh, and then here, basically, you're calling a message on your contract so you you're passing the flash loan message to the vault with the message that you want to execute this is this is on your contract okay. basically um, okay so the vault itself uh, doesn't have a white list of router that can call no, flash no. Loan, right no, okay. no. and anyone can do it the thing is like we build this for people to to be able to use the flash loans easily because if you if you don't have a contract, you cannot you cannot use the flash loans basically. And not everybody knows how to write smart contracts or, or write them properly or whatever. So this this vault router basically, as you saw, I just told the router, okay, I want to swap this for that, and then the other way around. So do these two swaps, uh, and that's it. Like you don't need to be thinking about sending the funds back or, or doing any of that. This is taken care of by the router. So. Um, so yeah, you can. I, I would encourage you to use our router, but uh, if you want to make your own router or your own contract, then you just need to talk directly to the to the. Yeah, to yeah the because I, I already have it, so I'm asking for this. Also because uh, I don't, I think uh, the, as you wrote, write the message uh, is uh, nearly impossible that the transaction pass because uh, in the second swap you have to insert. An exact amount uh, to be swapped, but uh, yeah. if the output of the first swap is not exactly the same, the transaction failed. Yeah, so, and, uh, and the and the thing and the thing is the following that 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 happened now. Well, I'm doing it manually. I I well I yeah. messed it up because I arbit already in the morning. <laughs> but but this this whole thing is basically this like if you want to do this optimally, you should be calling. Uh, you should be having a bot. And that's where the well, where the well, the bots that we develop and open source recently come into play. Uh, so you don't need to even develop your own bot; you can just use ours. Um, here is the documentation for that arbitrage bot. Um, so uh, here, here is everything you need to know on how to use it, basically. And if you go to the if you go to the to our repository. Um, Migalu Core, let me see. Oh. So if you go, it doesn't to... have a develop a full router. Uh, what do you say? Uh, you, you didn't you developed a full router? 
Uh, no, like a support router, Terraswap router. No, no, I, I, I did not. Well, I, I helped developing the, the, the Vault network, but, but it was uh, one of our other engineers who, who did most of the job. Because, because if someone doesn't have a, a router to uh, forward, uh, for example, for transaction of swap, mm -hmm. you can use uh, your router and uh, uh, send the, mm, the message to the Astroport router, for example or a lot of routers mm. that uh, already use uh, these, uh, the optimizers to operate you. But, but you don't, you can't uh, exit from Astroport uh, well, ecosystem of tools. Yeah. Well, you could. Yeah. Yeah, I guess you could do it. I mean, you could, you could in theory take, take use or our, our router and then send the tokens. Like one of the messages is basic, that basically you could yeah, you could use our router and the messages are sending the router, the funds back and forth to your own router. So you could do that as well. But okay. uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's more of how complicated you want to make. I mean, flash ones are complicated enough already for you to, to be adding more and more layers. On yeah, but, but I think that a uh, user that need a loan or a flash loan, mm -hmm. know how yeah. to do it and know how to develop contracts because uh, <coughs> to make an advantage of it, of it is uh, mandatory yeah. to be able yeah. to develop this contract. Yeah, opinion. and and yeah, that that's that's true. Uh, and but the thing is, like for instance, with this open source bot, uh, you can be running this. I mean, the instructions are in the docs. You can be running this, and basically, what this is doing is more or less what I show you now, but in an automated way. And all these numbers are calculated locally. And, um, I mean, you, yeah, yeah. you, you're not querying contracts. You're not doing any of these weird stuff that I was doing now in the demo, <laughs> but, but, uh, and it's much more efficient, right? Um, and of course, uh, we made this open source, uh, for the community, all the whole, the whole community to benefit uh, from it, uh, to democratize the use of flash loans and, and you can also take it and, if you're a buster, you can maybe you see stuff that can be improved. So feel free to to create pull requests or to create your own your own bots and and well use our 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 flash long uh, for for that. Um, yeah, what else I wanted to mention? Um, yeah, I think I think that that was it. No, no, it's really good uh, because Plashman was a service that was missing uh, even in the old Terra that uh, could be yeah. really, really useful. Well, we we actually pioneered flash loans also in the in the old Terra. We we, we created them. The thing is, like, uh, it was not so open as as now that we have all this tooling around. Uh, and and also, we're looking at uh, my browser, yeah, or or the code, yeah. The browser, yeah. Uh, your browser. Oh, and, yeah, and also this this uh, this tab we didn't have or anything in the previous app. So, but but again, yeah, you need to have certain knowledge to be able to know what to paste here, right? What what to put here. You can also upload your own your own file, and it will be just just pasted here. Uh, so if you connect the wallet, yeah. Well, I don't even have Kepler in this browser, but um, basically you connect it you can you can send a transaction and this is equivalent to to doing what i did in the cli but but with an interface um and yeah we would be we have the documentation that is very as they as said very useful I, I didn't write this documentation it was our 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 guy that does the the bots but i follow it through and and yeah i, I mean it, i i understood everything perfectly so uh, go through it, give us feedback if there is something unclear. There is a very good example here. Uh, explaining basically gives you a huge message, similar to what I yeah. show now, but well, you see that it has one, two, three, three messages. And then it explains what is the first message, what is what is this binary stuff, uh, this base 64 stuff, what is it uh, translated into, gives you, gives you a tool somewhere here to, to do it. On, on a website to, to convert this. So it's, yeah, I, I think it's, it's a good documentation. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of our documentation actually. Uh, so, okay, um, perfect, perfect. Thank you for this. And, and this is, yeah, and this is the first of our 
slash long workshops, as I mentioned. Uh, next one would be related to the bots. So how to run the bots and, and how they work and, and everything. So uh, because I think it's important to know both uh, pictures. So mm -hmm. how the how how the bots work are are not only the 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 the, work, the functionality of the bot itself, but also how they interact with the with the smart contracts, right? So I think it's important to know both. So uh, this is one the first workshop. Then we'll have another one, and um, depending on the interest and and the questions you might have or whatnot, we can even run more. And, and yeah, it's not only about flashings, but we we plan to be running uh, developer focused uh, workshops in the future, so so that more and more people uh, have access to this and and know how to use our infrastructure, basically. Cool. Thanks for the workshop, Kerber. Uh, do you guys have any more questions? If yes, come forward now. If no, I mean, that was what was cried a lot. We did o over an hour, so <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was quite a bit content to cover there. Yeah, for sure. And uh, yeah, if you have more questions, well, yes, feel free to drop them on, on Discord and, and we'll be answered. Yeah, cool, right. Uh, yeah, the recording will be available soon on YouTube. We'll post it here into the Discord and uh, probably also on Twitter. Um, otherwise, uh, thanks guys for attending. Thanks for your interest in flash loans and arbitrage in general. Uh, thanks Kerber for the workshop and uh, we will see us the next time with, with the bots workshop. Thank you. Bye-bye. Awesome. Have a good one.